Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. Thank you for joining us. This is virtual only. We no longer have our building. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number works if you'd like to contact us. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence, what's going on, why were you born for such a time as this. We solve a little piece of revelation. We're working on chapter six. This is a canned presentation, but I will be giving more of a live presentation tomorrow. I just gave it a couple of weeks ago. It's very very heavy on the sixth seal, but I want you to see the progression, and I want you to have kind of, a, in case you say, hey, Joel, why don't you meet with our small group and explain things to us? This is kind of what I work off. This is my template. So this is for a prayer group tomorrow, and but it fits into what I talk about frequently, so you'll get the general idea of what I'm doing. So the main thing is, I argue that the seven seals sound like the Matthew 24 birth pangs, okay? And I also say that People know when they're pregnant, other than one friend that I have, and I can't believe she, an athlete, didn't know that she was pregnant. These are observable signs that you're watching. Yeshua asked us to watch the observable signs, and people are ignoring them. And so I'm trying to help you to figure things out. The reason why we're heavy on chapter 6, I mean on, on the sixth seal, is because it is so observable. Um, so the main thing is people know when they're pregnant, they know when the birth pangs are occurring, they know when they're ready to give birth, and we're getting closer. So this will be a wonderful birth, it will be also a marriage with Yeshua, um, but keep in mind that these things should make sense. You'll see the water break, you'll, you don't push until you're dilated to attend. There are certain things you have to know, and a lot of men don't get this, but the women get it. Oh boy. So the main thing is we're going through the birth pangs. I'm trying to point them out, and I'm trying to do this as a standard presentation for you. So the verses are Matthew 24, in this case, 4 through 8. Yeshua replied, watch out, don't let anyone fool you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. You will hear the noise of wars nearby and the news of wars far off. See to it that you don't become frightened. Such things must happen, but the end is yet to come, for peoples will fight against each other, nations will fight against each other, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs, the birth pains. So what I'm getting at is that sounds like the seals, and we'll go through those as we, you know, hit the slides here. And so there's going to be blood, there's going to be bloodshed, there's going to be wars, other things like that. The signs make sense. You're seeing them. You may not know how to classify them, but we'll work through it. So when I see the the auroras, I think this is like watching somebody that's an alcoholic that has cirrhosis of the liver. I can see the signs. I've lived 65 years, and I've never seen this many beautiful auroras coming into low latitudes. Oh, that's a bad sign, people. And so I'm using that as a sign to tell you, wake up, smell the coffee. Yeshua's coming back, and this is one of the signs. It's kind of like car fluids leaking, okay? You know, all of these signs, but this is just one of them. There are many. There are probably... I've categorized about 140 signs of Yeshua returning in general biblical terms, but if you added in the signs that are scientific and cosmological, it's another 100, okay? Ben Davidson knows this, and we've talked about it a little bit. All right, so basically this is a sign you're sick with these low-level auroras. So let's get into Zechariah, which helps line up everything in our standard presentation, you should be aware that Zechariah 6 sounds like Revelation 6. It's for horse colors, they have directions, things make sense. And if you look on the lower right-hand side here, you are going to see that the colors in the Greek match up very closely. It's amazingly closely. And now I have friends like Doug Hamp that say the Septuagint isn't trustworthy. I don't care. It's really cool. It's like breadcrumbs for a guy like me that's a researcher. Okay, so let's read a little bit from Zechariah 6 so you can see what I'm talking about. These are the four spirits of heaven, and that's what I'm arguing in, in Revelation 6. Going out from standing in the presence of the Lord of the whole world, the one with the black horses is going towards the north country, the one with the white horses towards the Acharith, we call it in the Hebrew, which is west, and the one with the dappled horses, that's Barad, and it's very interesting, it might be like dappled green, but it is green in Revelation, toward the south, 
And so red isn't listed, but you know that red is east of Jerusalem. So it all makes sense. It fits into Revelation. It's, it's clues, and that's what the Septuagint and really the Old Testament does. It, it sets up clues to be able to figure things out. So the four horses, either in Revelation on the right-hand side or in Zechariah on the left-hand side, yes, I realize there are chariots involved, but I'll explain that later on too. Okay. This is from my friend John Haller, and what he keeps on telling you is that the seals open silently and they magnify over time. He's very correct with that. And so you can see the white and then the red and then the black and then the green, and they get bigger over time. They intensify over time and they open silently. So thank you, John, for being very correct in this assumption and this uh, this research. So uh, we're going to deal with the cosmic stuff. That's seal six. It isn't listed on this chart, but yeah, that's going to be most of the presentation today. Okay, what you've been taught over the years, and if you go out and do any research on this, is that the first seal is the Antichrist, and it's conquest, and he's going out to kill Christians, and the first horseman rides a white horse and carries a boat. That's about it. Okay, and I'm arguing based on Zechariah 6 that he's just overcoming the West. The second horseman is war. Doesn't say that in the text. There's no polemos in there from the Greek. Okay, so the second horseman rides a red horse and carries a Makira sword. It's kind of like a standard small killing sword. Well, kind of like a machete, okay? It's not that big. It's not designed for any war, special warfare. It's not designed for a horse or a chariot, which is interesting. The main phrase there in the Greek is, well, actually taking the Greek through into the Hebrew is lakak shalom. Think of it as taking peace away. That is occurring right now. The peace of the world is being taken away. Famine. No. The third one is more hyperinflation. Okay, so the third horseman carries a black ho or rides a black horse and carries scales. It's hyperinflation. That's what's in the phrase and how people handle the hyperinflation. So it, it, it isn't necessarily famine. That actually comes in the fourth seal, okay, which is death, Thanatos. That's the name of that particular rider. And the fourth and final horseman is accompanied by Hades and rides a pale. It's actually dappled green, probably, based on the barad word from the Hebrew. It's a horse, of course. And it, this horseman carries four plagues. Plus, one of those plagues is the Ramphea, which is a long sword that can only be used off a horse or a chariot. It's very, very long and pointy. So we won't show you the, whore, the, uh, the sword today, but just keep that in mind. So when you see all of these other things that are just thrown at you, it's the enemy, it's war, bloodshed, it's famine, it's pestilence, death, and, and famine, and death, and antichrist, and war, and whatever else, no, read the Bible for yourself, please. Just read the Bible for yourself and read what the words say. And, you know, dig back into the Greek a little bit and test out my analysis. The Greek is pretty accurate based on what I've seen. So let's jump into the first horseman. I am stating that this is the white horse. He has a bow, which is power and strength. It's also from uh, uh, Genesis 9.13, which is that the bow, the rainbow was placed up in the sky uh, as a sign from God to us. So it's part of the covenant. And so I'm arguing that on 6.6 six of 67, that the Jews in Israel said, hey, thanks God for the Temple Mount. We don't want it. We're giving it back. That was the most horrible thing to occur in the last 60, 70 years in the world. They were given an important gift, and they said, not interested. So basically, what I'm saying is that everything has changed from this 1967 through 1973 time frame. When many Jews started coming to Yeshua, they came in, we, we call them Messianic Jews, they're not. They don't keep Sabbath, they don't keep Torah in most cases. They're, they're Christians, but, you know, that's wonderful. Um, it's just that our Messianic flavor is a little bit different. It is... It is more like the the Revelation verses like Revelation 14, 12, and, uh, 12, 17, and other verses like that, which is the Spirit and the Torah, the Spirit and, and the Word, um, are critical as we get into the end times. So that's why I do what I do. Um, and so, anyway, so let's read Revelation 6, 1 through 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as it were, a voice of thunder, come and behold. 
and I saw, behold, a white horse, and he was sitting on it, having a bow, so that's in the Greek, taxon. It's keshet in the Hebrew. Once again, that's like Genesis 9.13 with Noah and the ark and the bow above his head. And so uh, this man, uh, this is the Orthodox, no, this is the literal translation. He cites Ezekiel 39.3, which is interesting. That's the Gog Magog War. And there was also given to him a garland. That's an accurate translation. It is a Stephanos in the Greek. It's a garland. It's more like an Olympics wreath that was given, you know, 2,000 years ago. It is not a standard crown. It is not Corona. I mean, unless you're reading Latin. But anyway, so the main thing is he went forth overcoming. That's a great translation. Then he may overcome, and I'm arguing Western civilization, based on the directions of Zechariah 6. So that makes sense in the literal translation, and that's what seems to be occurring right now. What you're noticing is the West has given up on God, they've given up on marriage, they've given up on family, and so by and large, the West is falling, and, and it's going to die at some point in time. People can't pay their rent, they can't pay their mortgage, their car payments. They pay endlessly for care of immigrant invaders who are overwhelming their communities with material needs. Wherever you look, you see the U.S. welcoming at citizens' taxpayer expense endless burdens from immigrant invaders permitted to walk unheeded across the border into the Tower of Babel that the U.S. has become. That is so accurate. So this is, again, Paul Craig Roberts reading with or writing with Zero Hedge. And so that's what it is occurring. It seems to be that we're annihilating ourselves because first we gave up on God. So uh, Republicans are rhinos. They stand for really nothing. You can vote Democrat or Republican and get jerks either way. And so they've let in 1.8 million immigrant invaders each year. That's horrific, and we can't afford that. So we're destroying our country through giving up on God first. And nothing can stop immigrants. Yeah, fine. Um, and then the EU won't stop it either, so Europe will fall before us. And if we complain about this, we're xenophobic or prejudiced. And so you can also cite Victor Davis Hanson or Jordan Peterson. They all know the West is destroying itself. And that seems to be the first seal, okay? The West falling. So the second seal, I'm arguing that the Bush family caused this. So on 9-11 of 2001, the Bush family said, let's go finish what George H.W. started, which is invading east of Jerusalem. And so George W. said, this is war and destiny, and basically he's saying that God told him to do this. Maybe so, but he did kick the hornet's nest, and we are paying for it right now. The main phrase is, Take peace away. That's Lakak Shalom. And so this particular picture, I wanted to grab this because it shows it the best by far. That's not the appropriate sword. The short sword must be shorter, much shorter than that. But I want you to read it with me. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come, and then another. So that means the first and the second are very similar. Alos in the Greek, which means it's just another horse, just another rider, just like Zechariah states, four spirits of heaven going out different directions. This one came out with a fiery red horse, and its rider was given power to take. So once again, that is Lakak, snatch, peace, shalom, from the earth, and to make people kill each other. So there is going to be death, but we always have death. It doesn't say war. There's no polemos in the Greek there, okay? Uh, to him was given a large sword. So it is large, it's megas, but it's makira. So it is not designed for, so the, the sword coming out of Yeshua's mouth is like a double-edged sword. That's basically um, Hebrews 4.12. And so Yeshua's mouth sword happens in Revelation 19. So you know that's the Ramphea coming out of his mouth. This sword in this case is just a large standard killing foot soldier sword from 2,000 years ago. Okay, so that's how it reads. I want you to read the Greek and the, the text with me so that you're not swayed by pastors that are just impressive and teaching you stuff that's dogma. I'd rather have you read the text for yourself. That's critical. Okay, third seal, inflation. Horrible inflation. There's some judgment in there. So let's just read the text. And when he opened the, the third seal, I heard the uh, third of the living beings saying, Come and see. And I saw an A. And that, that's that's kind of important. It's like, wow, you got to see this. A, a black horse and the one sitting on it having a pair of scales. That denotes judgment. So this is the Orthodox Jewish Bible saying that in his hand. And that's the judgment of the hand is, is 
part of, it reads out very similarly with other verses throughout the Bible of judgment with the scales and things like that. So Zechariah 6, 2 talks about that particular horse. And I heard, as it were, the voice in the midst of the four living beings saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and a shlosha of quarts of barley for a denarius. That means you're poor because you're you're not wealthy enough to afford good stuff. You're just basically getting some barley and some wheat for poor people to survive. For a whole day's work, you get to eat. Oh, that's great. How do you pay your car payment? How do you pay your rent payment? How do you pay for anything else for your kids? All you get to do is work and eat. That's it. Okay. And the wealthy will be buying Shemin, the oil, and Yain, the wine, because they're wealthy. And so the phrase after this, if you read it in the Greek, it's adikesis. And so uh, you'll say that's do not harm. It's actually saying lo avanim. You may not adikesis, which would be uh, you, you, you should not willfully sin against the poor by being stingy and greedy. And the wealthy are going to do that. They're going to look at the poor and say, you idiots, you should have saved up money. Well, they didn't make enough money. If you're earning minimum wage, you can't save up. So you'll see everything intensify. I'm arguing that the third seal opened on 728 of 2012 during that time frame, during the summer of 2012. And I was part of that prophecy. I heard it during the summer. I bumped into a man named Chris, and it related to Hurricane Sandy, and it related to Sukkot, and it related to 1 Kings 12. And you can read it for yourself, but the main thing is, it made sense, and it was interpreted by another man about six months later, and it all made sense. We're in the third seal. You know it. You, you see inflation. You know it. If you're poor, you're seeing it. You're, you're feeling it, okay? The wealthy, not at all. It's going great. I uh, bumped into a few wealthy friends today, and they are not noticing inflation in the least bit. Okay, so once again, inflation rapid hyperinflation u.s national debt is going through the roof even my rich friends notice it but they they aren't noticing that it's going to be a problem they aren't noticing the poor at all uh they drive through the poor neighborhoods and continue on home the public's positive economic rating slip inflation still widely viewed as a major problem this is from pew research center a christian uh, source that cites statistics majorities in both parties remain fearful about the state of the country i don't i will open for you his good treasure, the sky, to give your land its rain at the right seasons and to bless everything you undertake. You will lend to many nations and not borrow. We are borrowing right now. That's a curse. And we, we are borrowing from the other people, and we're not paying people back. We have no intentions of paying things back. And they're going to bankrupt everything. So debt out the wazoo. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the problem. So we are hitting these horrific numbers for debt woes. So basically, then we move on to the fourth seal. The fourth seal is four plagues. I want you to read that for yourself. I want you to dig through your Revelation 6, verse 8, and see that it's four different things. So when you open the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out and say, come. And I looked and there was a pale green horse. It could be broad. It could be a splotchy. Okay. But that's a death reference when you see the green, the green of death. Um, and the rider's name was Death. So that's a death reference. That's the second one. The only horseman with a name is Thanatos. And that is death. That's in the Greek. And Hades, Hades, we call it, followed after him. That is the place of where dead people go. So that's the third reference to death. And it's to all of them were given, all four of the horsemen were given exousia, executive level delegated authority. So there is no judicial overrights. There is no um, uh, uh, congressional overrights. It's basically just the executive determining what they want to do without checks and balances. Over a fourth of the earth. I have friends that are brilliant that claim that that means that it's the earth that's cursed, a fourth of it. No. When you see eight, nine references to death in this text, it's death, people. You can't run away from it. So gay is the word for the earth. And so they, it's cited twice here. No. The reference is to death. It is. Okay? So the four plagues are so two billion deaths, a fourth of the earth. To kill, that's the fourth death references with um, the Tzapokainu. Uh, with the Ramphea, as I mentioned, that is the long sword that can be 
it can be an ethnic or disease invasion. So think of it both ways that way. A disease being invaded into our country or into our Western society, say, because we're noticing so, so much right now. But it could also be an ethnic invasion of people coming in. Okay, just see that through the Ramphaya. The rabbis think that's what the Ramphaya means, is ethnic invasions. I'm arguing also disease invasions. That's that sword, that Ramphaya sword. Famine, that's limo, that's crop failure, that's crop issues, that could be flooding or droughts or whatever else, but it affects the crops. Death, Thanatos again. So he's named Thanatos and he brings Thanatos. Death, I'm arguing that could be turbo cancers, that could be um, hyper death of some nature, but when we see it listed in Isaiah 37, it's really like an overnight cancer that kills you. Okay, it's fast. And then the next reference is therion, small animals, could be biological warfare, and that's the size of animals. So in Acts 28, you see Paul being attacked by a therion, which is a snake, a small snake. But in this case, it could be even tinier animals, microscopic animals. So of the earth. So there's your gay word again, which has nothing to do with this. It's all about death, 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 eight times. So that's why I argue that is what the fourth seal is, okay? For greater death plagues worldwide, two billion people will die. Peak death should occur in 2026. It seems as though we're getting to that point. You, you don't believe it, but they're walking dead right now. They aren't dead completely yet. They're moving that direction because people are injured by many different plagues that are going on right now. They could be, um, uh, once again, let me look for this, ethnic or disease invasions. Okay, so keep that in mind. So once again, Ramphea is a broadsword, and that is a double-edged sword. It is also the sword that comes out of Yeshua's mouth as he returns in Revelation 19. Could be mass invasions, disease invasions, things like that. Limo again, crop failures, no fertilizer, all sorts of issues that cause crop issues. Like like the the wealthy people of the world saying, well, we need to save the planet so you can't grow anything, so you all need to die off. Okay, that kind of stuff. Thanatos again, war, cancers, things like that. There could be some war involved, but I don't I don't sense World War Three yet. Okay, uh, theory on animals, pandemics, biological warfare, things like that. Uh, small small animals. So that's, I'm arguing 1219 of 2019, as you know what we came into in 2020. That's when things kicked off, I think, for the fourth seal. Okay, fifth seal is a plague against believers. It is martyrdom. That's how it's phrased from Revelation 6, 9 through 11. So I'm arguing that we've had the blips in World War I and the blip in World War II. We're going to have a horrific blip as we go forward here, and it's going to be against the believers. So that's the fifth seal. Uh, you can read it for yourself. You'll see it is martyrdom, and that at some point in time, uh, you know, that's the souls of the martyr under the altar saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Things like that. So let's go through the seals again, just so you can see it one more time in context, in, in the, the process through. The first is the white horse, bow, crown, conquering, overcoming is the word. I want you to concentrate on that. The second one, bright red horse and great sword, but it's a makira, so it's a standard killing one, taking peace, snatching. Good phrase there, lakak shalom. Black horse, the balance, famine, it doesn't say famine in the text, it's hyperinflation, okay? But there might be some famine involved. The pale horse is actually a green horse, barad, splotchy, death and hadis, fourth of the earth, death, that's accurate, fourth from four plagues. They, nobody cites it properly, but it is four plagues. Once again, martyrdom, Revelation 6, 9 through 11, and then signs in the heaven. That one's going to go on forever. That's going to take us a long time to get through right now because we're finding more signs. And then silence in verse 8, 1, uh, so we move from chapter 6. So once again, the silence is the hush of expectancy for the verdict about to be pronounced on the guilty. This is from Wiki. You know, they actually got this right. And so they're arguing too much for the Antichrist. There are other reasons why people are martyred, and it's not just the Antichrist. He doesn't really pop up until the midpoint of the Great Tribulation, and we're not there yet. So if you see martyrdom coming up soon, it's just stupid people doing stupid things. 
okay? So basically, uh, they're arguing certain other things, but I wanted you to see the silence thing because the seals open silently and they increase quietly. So that's why no one's really aware of them unless you're reading the Bible. So please read the Bible as carefully as possible. Now let's run through one more time just so you can see it again. Zechariah 6 confirms the directions. Directions matter. Specific colors matter. Uh, and so the colors work in the Greek and the Hebrew. They really do. And it's very insightful. So just be aware of that. Zechariah 6 sounds like Revelation 6. Uh, so let's look at the four greatest events one more time over the last 60 years. Relinquishing the Temple Mount was huge. That was a gift from God, and the Jews handed it back. And so as a result, we've watched the West fall apart. It's societal dismantling, you know, and that's what's occurring right now. The Western world has fallen apart. You all know it. You're older like I am. And so we remember good times before sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And that's what kicked in after 667. And narcissism has gone through the roof. People are so narcissistic. narcissistic. And so just be aware of that. So once again, then on the second seal, 9-11-2001, changed the world. Um, the Arabs didn't need a reason to start World War III, but Bush and Cheney gave them multiple reasons. So we're moving closer to World War III because of Bush and Cheney and the neocons. That's the problem. Seal three, Pope resigns. A weird connection to the occult. It's a Mayan year. That was 2012. Yeah, during the summer of 2012, I was asking God for assistance, and, and he sent this Chris guy to me uh, to say after Sukkot, but before the end of October, there will be a great storm. The signs will be snow and a broom and I asked about the seals and he replied, the third seal opened during the summer of 2012. Everything else matched up. Five months later, another man came to me and told me God had asked him to read 1 Kings 12 in regard to future events. He asked me, do you want to know the meaning of the prophecy? And so it all explained it out. So read it for yourself. Okay. The meaning of the great storm was Hurricane Sandy, arrived on Halloween of 2012 during the first day of Jerome Moment's false Sukkot. During the false Sukkot, Obama was re-elected, proving our nation was divided like Israel, uh, Judah from Israel, and that's 1 Kings 12, as I stated. Uh, on the last great day of Jeroboam's false Sukkot in 2012, the Hurricane Sandy's aftermath caused this snow and a broom action across the East Coast. And that was Wall Street, and that was New York area and things like that. I'm arguing that the Jibby Jabber, that's what I'm going to call it, kicked off the big four, those four plagues, peak death. Once again, Deagle report confirms it also. So I'm arguing that 2026 seems to be that time frame. Um, nobody will publish anything about it, but it's building. And you're starting to notice it. When I was talking to friends today, the cancers were the constant conversation. The fifth seal martyrdom seems to be soon. We'll get to 2025 and all the things coming up here. And the magnetic anomaly, auroral records, unexpected KP, all these things connected with the sixth seal. So let's jump into it right now. I'm predicting a micronova will occur. It'll be called a sacos trichinos, which is a sackcloth mohair micronova and so within eight minutes you'll see this flash of light coming from the sun as it blows this stuff at us protons we'll call it okay then the protons will arrive 18 to 72 hours later and you will need to be underground so we'll go through this but yes there will be a solar cme that is actually called a micronova at some point in time and scientists are finding evidence of this all over the place so this is from space weather news the solar micronova will begin the next stage of earth current projections suggest the 2040s with increasing troubles from magnetic pole shifts before that yep so if you see the sun going from yellow to white, it's already white, people. Then the red, then the black, you will see a microdova. The black will probably only last three days, but this is what we're setting up for as we read Revelation 6, 12 through 13. And keep in mind, the earth kings are aware of what's going on. And you'll see that in the next section, the next verses. Then I watched as he broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake. And that is the micronova unlocking the crust and the mantle starts to break free. It is not the complete pole shift, but it starts it. The sun turned black. It's not an eclipse. As sackcloth, this is the final stage of a small micronova. As I mentioned, sackos trichinos, which is sackcloth in its layered like goat's shiny mohair angora. Okay, so you know the sweaters. It's, it's a fluffier type of a goat's hair. Okay, worn in morning, the full moon, it is full, 
So we know the timing. It has to occur during a blood moon eclipse. Okay, the full moon became blood red. And Mark Biltz went through this in 2014, 2015, and, and listed those things out. So bless Mark Biltz for that ministry. So the next one happens to be Adar, Adar, Adar 14, which is March 14th of 2025. And then we'll have, you know, eight more coming after that up to 2033. I'll give you that chart next. The stars fell from heaven to earth. That is that micronova dust accumulation event, just as a fig tree drops its bitter winter timing. You know, that's the time when you'll see this. Figs when shaken by a strong wind. So this is what we're expecting. So novas have been happening. We have probably 60 observations of novas. So they're nova-like. They're lesser and greater situations where the sun is occluded by dust or something else, and it blows out and causes basically an ELE, an ex extinction level event of some level, you know, whether very severe or slightly severe, you know, and, and then the X-ray admission. So this is emission rather. So it's Nova-like. So it doesn't have to be a full Nova. It could just be some kind of a partial Nova. And that's what Revelation 6, 12 through 17 is talking about. So, um, okay, so this is from 2004, but it proves that these, so you're looking on the right-hand side, you're looking at the cute little goat down there. That's an Angora mohair goat. That's the fluffiness of what will coat the sun. And it's coating the planets, too. It's already occurring. Okay, so this is from suspicious observers. Back a few months ago, the solar micronova is going to happen, and it will. Okay, and there are many catastrophists that know about this. So just so you're aware, there's the sixth seal, and then there's also uh, uh, the dust accumulation event during the fourth trumpet, and then also the fourth bowl. So keep in mind, this is going to happen three times in your lifetime going forward. This is from suspicious observers. Again, X-class uh, solar flare, solar storm coming, galactic sheet confirmed again. So the sheet is the dust. What you're looking at is a corrugated sheet of dust that's moving through our cosmos, and you can't really figure out where it's going because it's spiral-like, okay? But it will stick. So think of like a Swiss uh, Swiffer, electrostatic dusters, where they collect this dust and then you can kind of shake it off and so the sun will collect the dust the planets will collect the dust and then the shake off is when the sun explodes it off okay so expect them to be no brightness nova even just the dust shell ejection so at some point in time the dust shell will be ejected so swiffer dusters use static electricity to attract dust the dusters, polyester fibers, create a static charge when rubbed together, which causes the dust particles to align so that their positive and negative charges are near each other. The dust is then electrostatically stuck to the pad. That's what's going to happen to our sun and planet. It's going to be electrostatic. And it's been happening. It's happened many times before over the last 60,000 years that we seem to have recorded. So, the Great Wave, that's what you'll call it. Look on the right-hand side. We have probably 60 of these confirming reports that say, and this is from NASA, the heliospheric current sheet. They know the dust is out there. They they can't tell you exactly where it is because it's kind of spheric. You know, it's 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 it 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 fits a wave. You know, so they call it the Great Wave. Evidence of large-scale vertical corrugation propagating outwards into the galactic disk. What they're not telling you is that this is horrific for us. What it does is it sticks to planets. It sticks to us. It sticks to the sun. And it will cause the sun to blast us with a horrible pulse of energy. So this is from astro astronomy and astrophysics uh, from July 29th of 2024. So pretty accurate, pretty close. Okay. So what are the dates? You read them for yourself. 2025, 2026, 2028, 2029. The problem is three of them are very shortly. And based on my prayer life, it seems like 2025 is probably going to kick off one of these events. I don't know which one, but that would mean that you would need to run underground. That's the next slide. Well, next one after this. So basically, again, the sun in the sixth seal, there are many different signs going on which is more emissions from the sun that are unchecked as they penetrate our earth. The auroras are more low latitude and stronger and brighter. Uh, you'll see electric type storms occurring within a week or two afterwards. You'll see fissures in the earth. You'll see the South Atlantic anomaly and more. And that is actually biblical. I'll show you Isaiah 24. 
one and uh, 24 rather. And then also the pole shift. It's all biblical. It's all there, people, and it's occurring. And it all kind of works together as a factor of the sixth seal and then things progressing after that. So you will see these meteor showers. It's listed in the Bible. You see that in the next couple of slides here. Um, keep in mind the Millerites and the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses from 1833 saw this. And they figured, that's it. We're going into the end of the world. And so they predicted the end of the world in 1843 and 1844. They were wrong, but we're closer this time. So you will see a huge meteorite shower at some point in time as we move forward in the sixth seal. Okay, so once again... Great earthquake, black sun, blood, well, it's the full moon. It goes blood red. You know what it means. Stars fall, which is meteorites. Sky rolled up like a scroll. That is, I'll show you what Aruba is in just a little bit. And mountains and islands, not moved very far, but moved enough that you know the whole world moved. And so what you need to do, you need to plan for this and find a cave, stock it up, wait for the eclipse, camp outside the cave, wait for the earthquake, Watch the sackcloth mohair sun for brilliant signs of micronova. Observe the lunar eclipse as that's occurring. Run inside the cave. Watch for meteorite shower afterwards. But keep in mind, if you sit outside and watch the, the protons hit the earth, you will melt the fillings into your head. You will have headaches like you wouldn't believe. Your body will ache horribly. You could potentially die from heart attacks and things like that, strokes. So you have to go underground. That's what's going to occur. So all of those things are signs. So watch for these fig-like meteorite showers to occur outside your cave because aftershocks will move every landmass, so you have to get out of the cave. It won't be safe after that. So you, you know you have 18 hours after you know the micronova occurred to get underground, and then you're going to wait for a little while and then pop back up again. I'll explain more when we get closer. Six years later, you'll probably have the full micronova. So this is the plan. Be ready. Okay, so this is from Revelation 6, 14 through 15. The sky receded like a little, it's a megillah in my Hebrew text, little scroll, like a megillah. It's not worldwide, but it will recede and that, so the word uh, in the Hebrew would be Arubah, which is like the lattice of heaven, kind of opens and lets more things through. Noah had that issue where God wanted to flood the earth, and so he opened the lattice, the floodgates of heaven, and allowed more rain through. So um, the, uh, the islands aren't moved that far, but they're enough that you notice that the whole world changed. Then the earth's kings, rulers, generals, the rich, the mighty, indeed everyone slave and free, hid himself in caves and among the rocks and the mountains. When this occurs, everyone will know the micronova is occurring. This particular micronova is occurring. So once again, it's not going to be all of the Earth is open. Just certain sections are open more. And right now, you can Google it, South Atlantic Anomaly, and you'll see it's literally opening up. The windows of heaven are opening. Okay. Now, one other sign that you know things are happening is the billionaires are building bunkers. One, because there will be riots, obviously, after all this occurs, but also because... They know that they need to protect themselves, and they, they know the Bible well enough. As I mentioned, all the billionaires will know about this. Even the poor, even the slaves will know. Go underground when these things happen. Mark Zuckerberg is building something out in Hawaii. He's going to die there as the earth sloshes with the water. He's on Maui. So the main thing is the if the billionaires are running to their bunkers, you're going to have to run too. You, all you really need to do is build something in your basement. You could actually go grab some sod, lay the sod over your head, down in your basement, and probably survive, okay? Because the sod hopefully will ground you, okay? So this is what Ben Davidson thinks is going to occur. So this is Ben Davidson, suspicious observers again. He says, at some point, Earth's weakening magnetic field will weaken so much, and I'll show you that slides in a second here, but weaken so much that the planet will not be able to sustain even a moderate disruption in the solar wind. When that occurs, the grids will go down and there will be no more power as the sun continually ramps up towards micronova and the Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken. Cosmic radiation will bombard the planet with more and more. At some point, the solar system will enter the point where the galactic magnetic reversal occurs. The sun will go dark for three days, followed by a solar micronova, and the planet will go like this, twist. The poles will start to move. The crust will start to move. So you'll need to hide in a cave high up in the mountains, according to Ben. Well, that's biblical. 
That's why Ben went from being kind of a moderate believer into being a super believer, because everything that's talked about with what's going on in the world and the cosmos is biblical. So let's jump on this. This is Signs and Wonders. This is from the Big Wobble. Don't panic, but something incredible is happening. Last week, NOAA recorded three X-class flares, which have broken the record. Yeah, the records are breaking for all of these flares that are coming at us. And so the auroras are a sign of that. That's a sign of the Earth being sick. And I'm sorry, it's a couple more slides forward here, but you'll see the records from NASA and from the European Space Agency. So let's read the verses on the right-hand side so you can see what's going on. Terror and pit and snare await the people of the Earth. Whoever flees at the sound of terror will fall into the pit. Whoever climbs out of the pit will be caught in the snare. The floodgates, that's that Aruba, uh, H699, it's a lattice, it's a sluice. It's the floodgates of heavens are open and the foundations of the earth shake. That's Isaiah 24, 17 through 18. Yeah, that's what's happening. And what you're seeing with the auroras and the X-class flares and things like that is a sign that there is a sickness in our magnetosphere and that it will get much worse. Okay, let's just go to NASA and cite it. So this is a NASA report. This is a screen save from 2000-ish, you know, where they reported uh, from 1859 to 2000. And they said, the, and globally, the magnetic field has weakened 10% since basically 1859. Okay, because we started to check this stuff after the Carrington event of 1859. And so they're positive that it weakened by 10% at that point in time. Okay, so 10%. That's not the worst report ever from NASA. Thank you for reporting it, though. And they aren't reporting it anymore. This is from the ESA, European Space Agency. And they're saying over the last 150 years, the magnetic field has lost 15% of its strength. Uh oh, that means in 10 years it lost another 5%. That means it's weakening faster. Okay, that's our protective shield, ESA again. And so this is horrific because now we believe we're down 25%. And they're showing you the hole down in South America there, that literal uh, anomaly down in South America where, you know, the UV is leaking through. Okay. So this is the hole again. This is from the ESA from 2019. And you can see this massive hole down in the South Atlantic anomaly. So this is real. And so you'll notice that if you raise chickens, you know chickens need about 15, 16 hours of ultra, uh, ultra no, <laughs> that's ultraviolet uh, red. I'm sorry, I'm blanking it. I'm, 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 you okay the problem is the uv is affecting the 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 oh, i'm having problems with my, my words okay chickens aren't producing in this as many eggs because the uv is screwing the, the 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 red light we'll call it okay and so farmers uh, oh infrared i'm sorry there it is right in front of my face so you need more infrared to counteract the fact that the uv is off the richter scale leaking through okay so um this is showing how this energy from the sun is leaking through deeper, deeper towards the planet. And so deepening of radiation belt particles in South Atlantic anomaly region, the scenario over the past 120 years, horrific. Weakened magnetic field is pushing radiation belt particles towards the Earth in SAA. So that's the uh, anomaly region. So, pff, wow, not good. Okay, so infrared is critical for our animals and UV is debilitating towards infrared. Okay, so um, we we had five times in 2023 where we saw these low-level auroras. Well, we had a bunch in 2024. This is bad. This is a sign that at some point in time we will have the micronova. I believe two of them, one small, one large. Then the Earth tilt, solar system shift, arc discharge. Uh, that could be the seven thunders. I don't know, but it's coming. These, these are catastrophic things. What should we expect? Well, solar cycle right now 25 is much worse than we expected it's off the richter scale you can see it on the right hand side and so it might arrive early it might be stronger much stronger than we anticipate and so um cycle 24 which peaked in 2014 we don't know exactly when it's going to peak but it's just kind of out of control right now already in may 2024 we've experienced a century class geomagnetic storm with auroras sighted in the South Pacific, Central America, and South Africa. Amazing. 
Okay, so what should you expect to see then? More solar ozone destruction, solar forcing of heat, solar forcing of precipitation, solar forcing of wind, solar forcing of lightning, solar forcing of storms, solar forcing of ENSO, PDO, NAO, M AMO, AM AMs, things that you don't want. Okay, solar forcing of Hadley cells and Walker circulation, that's physics. I'll explain that later on. So all being amplified now because the Earth's field is weakening from Ben again, Ben Davidson, just a friendly reminder. I, I go out and check auroras when we hit the KP7. So just so you know, KP7 means things are bonkers. Solar storms of this magnitude increase emotional instability and decreasing cognitive function. Why does this happen? During storms like this, the induced electricity and particle bombardment increase and its effects on the hippocampus to decrease cognitive function while stimulating all the fear, panic, terror, anxiety portions of the brain. Yes, people go crazy during these storms, these aurora-type storms. These storms also impact cardiac function, autoimmune disorders, migraine, seizures. Yeah, that's where the world's going. You can expect stronger upper-level jet activity in the atmosphere. I was talking to a pilot today. He totally confirmed this. Uh, he has been a pilot for many, many years. He's 58 years of age right now, and he confirmed the winds up there are nasty for pilots right now. Uh, you, you don't know what to expect up there, and the storms pop up so fast. Impact on volcanoes and earthquakes are on a one- to four-day lag, but are they real, too? They, they aren't as big as they should be, but they're going to happen. Don't worry. You'll expect them. Many people begin to complain about their health, not during the magnetic storms themselves, but one to two days before them, that is, during the solar flares. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so Ben Davidson again. At some point, the Earth's weakening a magnetic field will weaken so much that the planet will not be able to sustain even moderate disruption in the solar wind. When that occurs, the grids will go down and there will be no more power. The sun will continually ramp up towards the micronova and the Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken. Cosmic radiation will bombard the planet more and more and more. At some point, the solar system will enter the point where the galactic magnetic reversal occurs. The sun will go dark again for three days, followed by a micronova and the planet will go twist. So I wanted you to see that one more time. That's, that's where things are going. So the poles will shift. That is biblical. I just read that to you from Isaiah 24. And so expect the pole shift. It's, it was heading towards North America. Now it's heading towards Russia. If you wonder why Russia is going to war, because they realize they're going to be cold as the pole shift. North America, I'm literally on top of the 45th parallel. I will probably end up on the 45th parallel as North America is forced down towards where South America is. And South America is forced into the pole region. That's what's going to happen. You don't want to be in India. It's uh, I can't describe what's going to happen to India. So I monitor tons of signs. Ben Davidson is monitoring about 100 signs. I'm monitoring about 140 plus his 100. So you will see as part of this Revelation 6 through 8, 7 seals, coinciding cosmic and earth signs. And you'll probably see, um, well, there's probably 100 more signs there that I could cite. A great earthquake. Then the Mohair Micronova, the galactic current sheet, which is dust, collecting, and that'll cause that Micronova. Then you'll see the blood moon eclipse, and the meteorites will fall to Earth, the sky holes, this magnetosphere thinning more, more, and more, and more. An extreme, uh, an extinction-level event uh, in the eventual pole shift, solar forcing, mental disorders, the rich and poor will hide in caves. You'll see sudden weather steam, weather changes, storm changes. Um, then at some point in time after that occurs, you would see the 144,000 sealed. You'd see silence in heaven where the winds will cease. You will see incense thrown down to earth. That'll be intriguing. Thunders and sounds and earthquake and lightning. When's the Shemitah year? When's the Jubilee year? We'll talk about that. So according to this guy, Stand in Faith, it's Tom jo Joss, I think it is. Nice guy. Um, he's claiming that the day of, of atonement in 2024, you know, basically, let me just give it to you without Tom's comments. He's saying Yom Kippur, October 2024, is the Jubilee year. It, you have to have the Shemitah year first. That comes first before the Jubilee year. I'm arguing that it's possible 2024 is that Shemitah year, the seventh year. Then the Jubilee year would be next year in 2025. We're not going into the Great Tribulation this year. It could be next year. Could be. So this is from Nehemiah Gordon. Uh, and you shall pass a shofar blasting on the seventh month in the tenth of the month. That's coming up in about a month from now. 
Uh, the Day of Atonement, you shall pass the shofar throughout your land, Leviticus 25.9. This verse is saying that the shofar should be used to announce the arrival of the Jubilee year, the 50th year in the sabbatical system. It does not say the Jubilee year begins on the Day of Atonement on Yom Kippur, only that the impending arrival of the Jubilee year is announced on the Day of Atonement. The shofar is to be passed throughout the land in, on Yom Kippur of the 49th year, six months after the beginning of the coming Jubilee year. This interpretation is supported by immediate context in Leviticus 25, verse 8. It says, to count 49 years. Verse 9 says, pass the shofar through the land. Verse 10 says to proclaim the 50th year. And I'm, Jonathan Kahn is a 50-year guy for Jubilees. I'm a 50-year guy. Mark Biltz is a 49. Good guy. I love I love both of them. I love Mark more. But basically, I've met them both. Um, so Yom Kippur, 10 of Tishri. So that will be, ew, goodness, I, I should know this in my head, probably October 13th, 15th, somewhere in that range. I'm blanking on it right now. I'm sorry. Um, well, actually, no. Did I state it here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, October, uh, when's Yom Kippur? 10th of Tishri. Oh, 2025. Yeah, October 1st at sundown in 2025. That's what I'm arguing is the Jubilee year, I think. I'm guessing. Okay. So once again, March of 2025 would be the first of Nissan, and that would be March 30th, rather. That would be potentially when we would notice the Jubilee year. The dates are on the right-hand side, Passover of 2025 and, and Feast of Tabernacles and all these dates. It's Right now, it's just a guess. When is Jubilee? When is Shemitah? But we should be watching for it. Okay, So just pause here if you want to and take a peek. Um, this is from the Essenes. I don't like their calendar. It's anti-Torah. But I do like the date that they're saying Yeshua died and resurrected in 32 Common Era. So Ken Johnson talks about this. Josh Peck talks about this. I don't agree with them because the calendar itself is anti-God. But it's very interesting. You know, the Sons of Light kept this calendar. The Sons of Darkness didn't. So the Essenes are interesting. Um, that would mean that it's possible that we would go into 2025. So we'll just see. We'll just wait and see. So once again, I truly thought 2017 was the Jubilee year based on all of my research in all of these phases. 1867, 1917, 1967, 2017. I mean, I found so much evidence. No, I think it announces the last Shemitah of the cycle. So 2017 would say the Shemitah ends in 2024 and the Jubilee in 2025. That would be what I think is occurring. So that would mean we would be going into Shemitah in a couple of weeks here. And then next year would be the Jubilee. We'll see. Um, the sixth seal sign could occur on March, March 14th of 2025 or September 7th. It would coincide quite well with Shemitahs and Jubilees. The blood moon eclipse has to coincide with the sun emitting an EMP as it turns black. Uh, the sixth seal, we would be able to figure that out. We wouldn't be able to figure out the seventh seal. And how long? I, I don't know. You can test my words. You'll be able to test out everything and observe it. According to Revelation 17, the way I read it, Trump is the seventh king. He will win. After that time, there will be Marxist chaos from the center of America. That is a Dudeman prophecy. Dimitri Dudeman, and it's kind of Wilkerson, too. So Trump will allow the changes to the status quo in Israel. So Trump has to be elected. We need the red heifer slaughtered. We need the holy restarted. And Trump would do that. He's that type of guy. He, he, he's a bull in the china shop. Uh, you'll observe the changes in the sun. If it turns red, then black, run underground. Um, and then, you know, you'd see the meteorites. So basically, you'd be intrigued by October 11th of 2024 for the Shemitah things. Okay? Um, everything would accelerate after that, especially heading into the false Yom Kippur and false Sukkot that was telegraphed during the Olympics. You know, we can talk about that later on. That'll take time to go through. Persecution would occur in 2025. The status quo needs to change in Israel. You you need the two witnesses plus Trump to get that done. Um, Gog, Magog, we'll cover that in our last slide here. Basically, I'm arguing that based on the fact that Gog is buried in Israel, I'm saying that Obama is Gog and will work with the kings of the earth against Israel externally by forging a 70-nation kings agreement to attack Israel simultaneously. That would be at the end of the seven years. But it's just interesting. Just watch the players there. There are more players than this. And notice, I'm really not talking about the Antichrist first. 
Gog works externally through the nations. The Antichrist will work internally to deceive Israel. He will be on the inside as a Jew working with Jews. Uh, he wants them to believe that he can bring them peace. The Jews don't trust Obama. The Jews will trust this man. Every orthodox beastly effort will bring curses from God. This is betrayal. Internal, external. That's what's going on. Where are we? We're in the birth pangs. We're not in the tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation. Those last three and a half years and three and a half years, I'm arguing that the seven seals are the birth pangs. I want you to be aware of that in the Bible and be aware of the signs so that you can track things and, and make sense in, in, in your mind uh, rather than you know believing somebody that says, well, it happens to be war when that word is not used in those verses, things like that. So be patient. You're waiting for a wedding at some point in time at a Rosh Hashanah, a Yom Kippur, or a Sukkot in a future year. Your garments need to be clean. They need to be white. It's a wedding. Get ready for that. Be blessed. Thank you very much for your time. We'll talk to you later on.